This is a Vertibird unbox in the year 2024. Got this off eBay for about $170. Uh, this was not in working condition. The uh, propeller uh, blade, the helicopter blade, uh, is broken. And so that's why I got it uh, for that relatively, uh, comparatively uh, lower cost. These units, uh, in working order with all the bits, uh, go for three, four, five hundred dollars. Now this is one of the coolest toys of the 70s and 80s. This is uh, the closest you can get, at least you know, uh, in a cheap way to uh, a RC helicopter. Now I'm assuming RC helicopters were around in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. um, uh, RC uh, uh, toys were big then. Uh, but this is one of the things that uh, was manageable for, for most kids. And one of the coolest mechanical sorts of toys. Uh, I always find that the mechanical toys are some of the coolest uh, design stuff. That was the other part of the uh, helicopter blade uh, that I had. And I eventually had to do some plastic welding. Now this is an interesting old manual. Um, you can see it's uh, sun bleached and, and, uh, and dark in there. And it goes through the safety instructions. And it says, safety first, be a good pilot, be a safe pilot. Follow the instructions for adding a vertebrate uh, to power cable carefully. Fly uh, your uh, vertebrate in an open area away from furniture and other objects. Now this capture mission here, I wanted to read this out loud. An all points bulletin is out on Crusher Beastly and Babyface McPherson. They just robbed a bank and made their getaway. But wait, you have their car spotted from your vertebrate. They are on a crowded highway, so you have to catch them without hurting other people. Place road uh, pad, getaway car, and roadblock in circular path of the vertebrate. Now, uh, the car and the roadblock I did not get, but I did get the, the strip of road, which is just a piece of cardboard uh, with, with color on it, so you can make your own. Now you are ready to swoop down, grab the round block with your sky hook, and drop it in front of the car. Okay, now, uh, now hook the get, uh, getaway car before they escape and take them away. Mission accomplished. Good work. For an even tougher capture, you can make mountains and canyons by stacking books in a circular path of the vertebrate. Only a really skillful pilot uh, can fly among these obstacles. Can you? Is the question. So that's what the the capture mission uh, says on, on the manual. I thought that was pretty cool. You can see the battery bay here. Um, really no uh, corrosion at all which is uh, pretty amazing for these old toys. So obviously batteries were not kept in it. You can see the, the copper there was pretty clean. Uh, overall, um, uh, you know, the, the stickers are coming off. The helicopter didn't have um, the sky hook on it. I had to, we fabricated one out of some uh, metal that we uh, um, uh, bent and shaped basically. You can see the throttle there off and fast. Be safe off, where, operator, keep behind control. So the thing is that if you got your face in line with uh, the, the propeller blade, you can put out your eye, uh, that's for sure. This was all working. Nothing was broken here. Um, the controls are a little bit stiff, um, you know, obviously being a 30, 40, 50-year-old uh, toy, um, a lot of it's going to be brittle uh, plastic. Most of the plastic is there. Again, I'm, I'm missing the, the roadblock and the car. And... Uh, but uh, I think the rest of it is intact. Oh, the, the radar array that uh, goes on the top of this uh, per the box. And, of course, the skyhook there. You can see the missing skyhook in the back. Um, but otherwise, it works. Uh, you see the adjustment there. And uh, so what I did for the helicopter prop is that I, I got my uh, soldering gun uh, heated up. I put a flat blade on it. And I melted both sides of the blade. And then I squished them together. So and then um, the stuff that squished out the side, I kind of went over them uh, mm -hmm. it and melted it all around. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a different technique than welding metal if you've ever done that. Mm -hmm. uh, but so far it's worked. Uh, we've had it. We've been using it. Uh, all my kids have used it. And uh, it's held together. It hasn't put anybody's eye out yet. Um, the, the, the prop, it doesn't look pretty, uh, but it seems to be working. This is my <laughs> test run of the prop, uh, kind of bringing it up slowly. Um, there is a bit of wobble, and this is kind of common for these things. I don't know if it's more because of the age of this particular unit. Uh, you know, all the metal and stuff is, is pretty old, so I would imagine, you know, a lot of it, uh, a lot of the bits and pieces are getting pretty uh, brittle. Wow. You can see as the prop uh, spins up, uh, some of the vibration goes away. 
overall it uh, it does fly pretty well you can see the the base of it that is cockeyed a little bit kind of bent up and i switched the little spring that uh helps support the weight of the helicopter i put it more into the middle at the base uh, in the base unit and then here i was just adjusting the helicopter to be a bit more level in flight because uh, someone had adjusted it from the from the default so i put it back to default there i'm kind of testing the uh, the prop making sure it's not ready to absolutely fall off the other thing I, I didn't do was I didn't angle the, the piece that I put on properly. Um, I wasn't really thinking about that when I was trying to weld the pieces together. Um, so I had to kind of melt it with the uh, solder gun again, which made it look ugly, um, but then kind of bend it into shape um, so that I could get some some lift uh, from it. Overall, it seems to work well. Here it is in the hover. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it as long as you uh, manage the controls properly, it does uh, very well. We had it out on, on, on the pool table, it was kind of the biggest open area, and it's, uh, I, I switched the orientation, um, but if you set it down right on the top of the pool table, the blades don't hit the rubber bumpers, they're just above the rubber bumpers, uh, which is something to think about, because um, you know, when you hit those blades, that's, that's when they're going to absolutely uh, snap. So this was a time now that I gave it over to my, my kids to try out, um, so they, they had lots of fun trying to take off. and hold a hover and, and go back and forth. Right the there, forward so. momentum or the forward control isn't the best. I think it's out of uh, uh, out of tweaking and it needs to be tweaked a little bit um, to make it work a little better. Uh, but overall, everything kind of works as I would expect. I don't know that it ran a ton better when it was new, to be honest. they were. I always remember them being a little bit fiddly anyways and, and some vibration. Um, I never had one uh, growing up as a kid, um, but um, though I think it, the one time I did visit a, um, uh, a friend who had one, I just thought this was uh, the coolest uh, toy. You know, there, there's uh, maybe a handful of t kind of top toys uh, from uh, the 80s, 90s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and uh, this was way up on my list. And if you look on eBay, these things are super expensive. What we did from here on in is we made some objects uh, to lift up. <laughs> this was before I put the skyhook on it. And then we made uh, some uh, various objects and we put some metal hooks on some cars and things. And so the rest of the video is uh, just going to be us kind of playing around with it uh, with various Lego things that we tried. And uh, the kids love it. Um, they hardly experience uh, some of this mechanical thing, uh, and, you know, sort, sort of toy, this type of toy that you used to get in the 70s and 80s. Um, now everything's right. digital, electronic, um, computer yes, chips. Yes, yes, uh, this yes. was all made with with wire and, and right. motors and, and, and batteries yeah. and uh, it's quite a, quite a marvel of, of a toy in, in my opinion it's uh, there's just something about this that is kind of magical I also have an old slot car set and I have a, a couple of old train sets as well again going back to the whole mechanical electrical uh, sort of uh, toy that you could get back in that time and I thought again some of those were mo the most uh, fun kind of tactile um, engaging sorts of toys that you always dreamed of having as a kid so uh, I'll, I'll leave it there I won't talk anymore but you can watch the rest of the video and uh, and uh, we're, we're still playing with it we'll play with it for a while maybe now that's working I can go ahead and sell it on eBay for, for a couple more dollars and, and get my money back for it I haven't decided if I'm gonna sell it again or not but uh, yeah the propeller blade has held up after uh, the plastic welding um, so I can definitely say that that, that works and uh, you know to get spare parts for this um, is all but impossible it's just too old uh, even for 3d printing it uh, some of the um, the way the, the the blade sticks onto the helicopter is too finicky I think uh, and maybe maybe they have some super precise uh, 3d printers now that might do it but uh, um, I, I think it would be pretty hard to rebuild, but that would be that would be my first go-to thing if you're looking for spare parts um, to to try and 3D print them, and uh, that would work well I think for uh, the barrier, um, the car if someone could reproduce that, and uh, you know maybe some other obstacles. So pretty cool stuff. Thanks for watching. Dump, dump, <laughs> dump. So now you gotta go backwards. You gotta lower. Go backwards. Uh, more power. Yeah. Are you hooked on it? More power. Need more power. More power. Do I have it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I do? Yeah.
I'll drop it off in the dump lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yay! Can I try? Backwards, wait, wait, wait. Backwards, up, 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 up. Can I get the... 